Star Soaps channel. How are you today? I'm doing good. My name is Crystal Star. I'm the Queen Soaper here at Star Soaps and today I'm going to be making some thermal mud soap. That's right, a beautiful detoxifying thermal spa bar using Rotorua thermal mud from New Zealand. So that's really cool and it's going to have activated charcoal and it's going to be a really good soap for pimples or oily skin. So it's really, really good for combating oily skin, but it also draws out impurities from the skin and it's detoxifying and it's glorious stuff. So come along with me and I'll show you how I make it. Squee! <laughs> okay, so first things first, we're gonna add our cooled lye water to our cooled oils, just like we've done hundreds of times before. And in the cooled lye water, I have tried to dissolve mulberry silk. And it often does this and leaves clumps behind. So that's why I'm always very careful to strain my lye solution. And strain out any of the silk that hasn't dissolved. So now I'm just going to give it all a bit of a mix to help bring it together. Before I bring the stick blender in. And give it a good blitz. So you always want to give your stick blender a bit of a tap like that to burp it. You see the air bubbles that came up? And then we can start to mix and look at the beautiful spiral of emulsification. So now that we've brought it to a very light trace or just emulsification, I give it a bit of a mix with my hand but without turning it on. Make sure everything is really thoroughly blended together before we can move on to the next stage which is to separate our soap out. So I'm going to be separating my soap out into two portions. One that is going to be very dark and one that's going to be light. So I'm just adding in my fragrance and essential oil now. I use a blend of cedarwood essential oil and bushwalk fragrance that smells very much like a nice fresh crisp walk in the forest. Absolutely love it. It's a great smell for this particular soap. It sort of makes you think of natural things and earth and all of that goodness. So I'm just going to measure out a small amount of the soap to colour white. That's going to be my accent portion. So I'm adding a little bit of titanium dioxide that I have previously mixed into water here. And I've done a water discount in order to be able to add that in so that we don't have too much ash forming on the final bar and it's important to do this to make sure that you make note of every bit of liquid you're going to be adding back into your soap and make sure that you do the right amount of water discount. So in this jug I've got my thermal mud blend and in there is activated charcoal, Rotorua thermal mud powder and fruit powders. So I use different fruit powders and I make all my own fruit powders. So if you're wondering how to make a fruit powder, you just choose what fruit you would like, dry it, and you can use a dehydrator for this. And then once it's completely dry, then you can put it into a coffee grinder and grind it into a powder and voila, you have got fruit powder. And you can add a little bit of a preservative to your fruit powder if you want it to last, if you want to keep it. But I tend to make mine fresh as I'm going to use them. So this one has orange powder, mango powder and lemongrass powder. And of course, like I said, it has the activated charcoal and it has the beautiful Rotorua Thermal Mud Powder, the star ingredient. So I mixed the soap into the jug first to make sure that I got all of that good mix of delicious stuff I just talked about. And now I'm just scooping it back into the bigger jug and making sure that I get all of that soap mixed together. In this double batch, I use one tablespoon of activated charcoal. And in hindsight, I'm thinking I probably could have used one and a half to two tablespoons because the final soap is not as dark as I wanted it to be. So I think I've talked about this in the past. I make a couple of soaps in my inventory that do contain activated charcoal. One is my man soap and the other is this one, the thermal mud soap. And for them to stand apart, I like to put in more activated charcoal into this one and less into the man soap. 
This means that the man soap will have more of a grey colour and it will have a white leather. But this soap should have more of a black colour that leaves a grey leather when you work it into a leather. This will not stain you or stain your washcloth or anything like that. It's just about upping that detoxifying nature. If you know anything about charcoal, you know that it is used in medical ways to absolutely neutrify, that's not a word, <laughs> to absolutely make things neutral that are gross. So the best way I can explain that is if you take a bunch of nasty stuff in your tummy, they'll give you activated charcoal to drink and it will help to neutralize whatever you've got in your tummy. It's quite interesting, eh? So the soap has gone and gotten a bit thick on me and I have to act fast now. And I'm putting a lot of it into the mold, giving it a really good bang down so that it will be even in the mold before I come back through and add that white accent color. And then I'll come through with my hanger tool and give it all a hanger swirl. So now that it's had a good swirl, I give it another bang, and that is to make sure we get out those air pockets, hopefully, that might be hiding in there in the soap. We don't really want air pockets, we want this to all be soap. So when it gets stuck like this, it's important to really tap the moulds down once you've filled them like this. Give them a real good bang, and you'll make sure that you bring up those air bubbles. You're kind of burping it. <laughs> So now I'm going along with the skewer and I'm not really doing this for any decorative purpose. It's more to help that soap be nice and settled in the mold so that I can go along and put my toppers on. And for this soap I don't have, you know, crazy toppers. I just have simple white stars in three different shapes. So I'm going to come along now and put my stars on the very top. And I've got these larger ones that are made out of melt and pour. And they are really, really pretty. There's a little bit of glitter in the melt and pour, so they sparkle. And they sit on the very top of each bar. The other stars that I'm going to come in with are made out of my soap dough. 
and I just roll the soap dough flat and then use fondant cutters to cut the shapes. It makes a really unique topper and I've been doing a lot of stars because, you know, I'm star and I make star soaps. <laughs> I really love how these actually turned out even though they're not quite as dark as I would have hoped for I've made notes and in the future I will tweak that so it sits overnight and in fact in this case it sat for the rest of the afternoon into the evening and I've come through at about midnight because it got hard really fast and I need to cut it so as you can see the soap didn't turn out as black as I hoped it has more of a gray color and judging from you know soaps that I've made in the past I'm guessing that it will also just have a white leather and not a gray leather so that could be a good thing I'm sure there's some people out there that would just prefer a nice white leather in their soap and it still contains all of those wonderful goody goodness so you know it's one of those things. Let's check out our first swirl and I love it. It looks like a crazy dragonfly or like scary eyes or something. Love it. Unfortunately, like I said, the soap got really hard and that has affected the cut. But as soon as you start washing with it, it will smooth that surface back down again and you'll see those beautiful swirls. So it's not the end of the world. And every single soap has a big star and a little star on the very top. And it's a simple design, but I think it really adds a nice touch. It makes it more unique to me. Oh wow, that swirl is cool. Very detailed. And I can almost see a person in there. Wow. You can see all the little speckles of the fruit powder as well. And you can sort of see little speckles of black as well that are sort of all floating around inside the soap. It smells lovely and earthy and it doesn't smell, you know, like a fake smell. It smells like something very natural, which is good. That's exactly what I was going for. We do have a few jolly air pockets in there though and some bars got more air pockets than others which is annoying. So like I say, if your soap ever gets really thick on you when you're working with it, don't be afraid to give the moulds a good bang and a good tap and just try to bring up all those air bubbles if you can. All in all, I'm actually pretty happy with how these soaps turned out.
So the soaps are ready and now they have to cure for four to six weeks before they test pH neutral and are ready to be used. Here are some pictures of the wet soap in the mould and I do find it incredible how black it looks when it's wet versus how grey it looks once it has sat overnight. That blows my mind. It doesn't change any further from here though. It stays exactly this colour that you can see right here. I really hope you enjoyed watching me make these thermal mud bars. I absolutely love this soap and I will probably always make it. And this week I would like to highlight Sharon Claire Broughton and her gorgeous series of soaps that she made and took this beautiful picture in front of a gorgeous fern and then posted this in our group called Star Soaps Family. It's over on Facebook so come and join us and share your picture because I love seeing what you create. You inspire me and I inspire you and we're a great team guys. Well I hope that you like this video and I hope you hit subscribe, ring that notification bell and feel the soapy love.